once. It's, it's Alice. I am of the stars. I remember years ago I was working at the Jewel Stein Eye Institute at UCLA as editor, editor and librarian there. And uh, one of the doctors there, I think it was Leonard Abt, the MD, um, did a very interesting paper, scientific paper, on uh, the likelihood of, of doctors uh, uh, um, being infected with hepatitis, I think it was. I don't think HIV, hepatitis. Uh, when they were wearing surgical gloves and doing operations. Now, uh, the results, as I recall, were pretty high likelihood of, of that kind of infection um, compared to what I thought was the likelihood. I'll, I'll look it up and find out. And, um, and it got me thinking at that time as the editor of scientific publications over there, it got me thinking uh, about how that uh, applied, how that finding applied to the wearing of condoms uh, during sexual intercourse. And um, I think that there's some congruence there. Um, so I think uh, then after that there was a practice for a while of surgeons double gloving, you know, to mitigate that risk of contracting a blood disease while uh, during, an, during an operation. And so whether that was helpful or not, I don't know, but if it was helpful, then it might apply to safety during sexual intercourse, unless you already know that your partner is, um, is without risk. The thought came up to me at the time that I read that article that um, there must be a risk factor also for patients if the uh, physician has contracted hepatitis. And so I don't know if a study's been done on that or uh, what, what might be done in a situation where a physician has HIV or AIDS or uh, hepatitis of any sort. Some uh, is carrying some infection that might infect uh, a patient who's being operated on. And, and I can see a number of issues there. Of course, the most obvious issue has to do with the patient's health, but there's also the loss of all the talent and years of expertise and experience of the physician if he should stop doing surgeries because of that infection. So I see that that issue is a very complicated one and I don't have a solution to offer to that. I don't know what to say. I would be more likely to, to, to talk about the difficulties faced um, in the current medical milieu, is that how you say it, milieu, uh, when a physician has a dependence on alcohol or recreational drugs that, that um, interferes with sound judgment or deft uh, manipulation of tools during surgery. And uh, I, I remember years ago, I don't know about now, hearing that the medical profession uh, took very good care of its, of its doctors and uh, would look the other way, is what I had read, uh, if they had troubles like that until some patients had actually died because of it and then only at the insistence of patients or maybe a lawsuit or something like that would action ever be taken and that, that action was too light I don't know if all that is true or not. I don't know if, if doctors look the other way or if they have a sound way of uh, like policing um, the efficacy, the efficiency and professionality of the people that are, that are doing surgeries and practicing medicine. But it's always something to look at. Even if there are good um, 
measures in place, there's always ways to improve, don't you think? And when we think about it, our greatest loyalty to a group has to do with seeing to the best, the highest ideals for, for everyone in the group, the highest the highest professional ideals and the and the greatest good for people that 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 really need help that belong to the group, don't you think? Rather than blind loyalty, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think.